Hi, this is Jason Arbin, a co-author of How Google Tests Software, and this tip is called uh, Don't Write UI-Based Regression Automation. Um, the, the biggest thing we learned at Google was that we should not write uh, UI-based UI regression test automation. Uh, using Selenium or, um, or uh, Eggplant or these other things, uh, it seems like a good idea. A lot of well-intentioned uh, smart engineers always try to build it to validate everything end-to-end, -end, but the reality is you end up abandoning that uh, that engineering. It creates a lot of false positives for the team, uh, and you really just incur a bunch of technical debt. And if, if, if your project is moving quickly and changing often, uh, the UX is always changing, so your tests are always breaking. Uh, so the trick is, and the tip here is, write your UI automation or end-to-end -end automation um, uh, in the language of the application itself at a layer underneath the automation, so through a testability API. For example, the, the Gmail team used to use a lot of Selenium automation to click the buttons and find the buttons on the page and validate that the certain text in the email came through, and they ended up abandoning most of that. But what they ended up doing was writing a bunch of JavaScript tests that live inside the page and call the APIs that the buttons call. Um, so if the buttons can move anywhere on the page, the, the element names can change, and your tests keep passing. Uh, the other other advantage of writing uh, test cases in the language of the application instead of uh, another application like uh, like Java in the case of, of Gmail, is that developers, when they see build failures and stuff, they're more than happy to dive in and, and debug the code. Um, uh, so that's probably the best thing in the world, because you can actually enjoy your weekends and evenings while the developers are debugging your test code. One of the most interesting lessons we learned, and it's captured in the book, uh, is uh, learning how to leverage the crowd. And by that I mean, uh, you know, tens of thousands of crowd testers are out there in the wild that have real devices, real machines, um, and have fresh mindsets when they look at your product. We did the experiment. It's somewhat documented in the book, but uh, we took a, a, teams of team, a team of testers that were doing regression tests on Chrome, um, and they were executing the same tests over and over and over again, which is kind of mind-numbing. Uh, we passed it out to the crowd, and what we found was, was pretty interesting. We found was that the crowd was finding about twice the number of bugs and, and about twice the rate of those, the, the find rate of, of priority one bugs, uh, severe bugs. Uh, and the reason is that the crowd testers had the context of our real world users, and they weren't, in, they weren't running tests and executing them in artificial environments. Um, so the tip is to, to really leverage the crowd. Uh, take your regression test cases, uh, uh, and especially for mobile, um, don't ship without using the crowd because you'll find a bunch of environmental issues that you won't find in your test lab uh, or with your dog food team. Uh, so instrument your app binaries, send them out to the crowd, and, uh, and you'll find that uh, you get test passes done faster and you'll find better bugs, um, and there won't be any surprises after ship. So management at Google, uh, especially with this distributed and flat organization, uh, is difficult and interesting. It's been kind of the most fun uh, management experience I've had. Um, what I've learned to do, especially when you have uh, very competent and highly motivated people that could work anywhere, um, the question is how do you lead them and how do you how do you uh, uh, get the most out of the most productivity and the most creativity? Um, and so. The biggest lesson to learn is that uh, uh, and this most tech leads and, uh, and managers at Google lead by example. So you don't manage, you don't boss people around, you don't tell them what to do, you don't even really beg or ask them. Uh, what you do is you, you basically be the best pirate. Um, so you need to, <laughs> you, you basically go out and tell people, like, there's gold over here, uh, this is how I think we should get there, um, and you also need to, to dive into the code first, you need to be in, involved in code reviews, you need to be involved in testing and quality first, you need to be the uh, first responder to any issues or escalations, um, and you'll find that people will just follow, um, and they'll follow, follow that leadership. Um, so you can't sit back like a lot of happens in other companies and stuff like that uh, and just kind of boss and dictate and set goals and people will do them and because Google employees um, in particular can work about anywhere. The question is how do you keep them engaged and how do you keep them motivated and what, how, really what it comes down to is, is um, a sense of teamwork and a sense of a shared goal and purpose. And often that purpose and goal is more interesting than just completing a project or shipping code. It's about making an impact on the world and, uh, and growing their careers and skill sets. So my tip is basically be, be a pirate and be the best pirate if you want to lead pirates. Thanks for listening to the podcast. I hope this is helpful. Um, and the book, How Google Test Software, uh, was really designed for you, designed to, to let you know what happens inside of Google, uh, demystify it a bit, and share some best practices. And what I'm finding when I talk to people about the book is that their organizations and their engineering is becoming more agile and more Google-like. So uh, the purpose in sharing the book was, was to get people... Uh, 
exposure to how Google, like how we learned, well, the, the techniques and practices we learned to deal with these issues, because uh, they're more and more applicable every day as the world goes mobile and goes uh, agile. Thanks.